Where am I? You're in car heaven. Up here, you can have any car you want and you can put any type of mod on it. Any car? Any car you want. Anything in the world. Any car? Yes, any car. Okay, I'll take a Honda Civic. Great choice, great choice. All right, how about an EP3 for you? No, not that one. All right, must be an FK8 kind of guy, huh? No, no. Oh, uh, okay, let me guess, let me guess. EJ1. No, not that one either. All right, so I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm really hoping that I'm wrong, but just tell me what you think about... Yeah, yeah. That's a yeah, yeah to what I'm saying, or is that a yeah, yeah to the that, car? That's the one, that's the one, that's the one I want. Is it really, though? Oh, sure, you that one. Okay. I want, um, I want some black rims, like blackest rims mm, you got. Got you, yep. I, I, I'm starting to see your direction. Mm, maybe black out the, the headlight? Yep. <clears throat> Done. All right. What else do you want? I want biggest swing you've got. Fits the uh, fits fits where I we're also going. I want some butterfly doors. Should have already had those on there for you. Honestly, you want some neon while we're at it? Just do the interior. Yeah, yeah. Some some neon lights make it look really cool everywhere. And then what's next? A uh, roof scoop. You want some fender flares? You want? Just get rid of bumper. I don't need the rough bumper. Just get rid of it. Okay. That's actually a good move. I think that that brought some integrity back to the build. Good job. Good job. This is this is heaven. This is car heaven. This is the car, this is the track, and this is Kibrit, the skateboarding cat, and honestly, she has better driving standards than most of the people this week. Uh, so this is my car for the day. We're in the race labs livery of the GT4, the Cayman Porsche, and this is the qualifying session in the rain. I had, I mean, probably two or three laps of practice for this, so I'm not up to pace. I'm also not really a GT4 driver or GT anything driver for all that much. So working with the assist is very strange for me. And um, yeah, let's just go ahead and cover this lap. We had a decent run through turn one, what felt decent to me. Eau Rouge and Radion in the rain is absolutely puzzling to me at the moment. I'm sure I'm doing many things wrong here, probably breaking too early to start that off. Getting understeer and steering while in that puddle is I'm sure not doing me any favors either. Able to get up to the top of the hill in fourth gear. Perhaps could have been in third there as well. Now that I'm watching it that, I, back, I'm realizing so many things that I probably could have done differently. All of the way down the Kimmel straight, extremely slowly, braking very cautiously for this, uh, this braking zone. <laughs> probably about 50 meters too early, but we do get the car stopped. Managed to avoid the puddle on the inside here and here, kind of cutting around the dry line and uh, trying to maintain grip all of the way through there. Heading down towards the little hairpin. Very difficult corner and one that, I mean, I'm playing it extremely safe on. I saw so many people die here as well as I died here once during my practice. So trying to really, really slow the car down for that and kind of kick the rear end out a little bit to find the angle. Uh, use the use the lack of grip to my advantage in some places. Same thing here, kind of kick the rear end around and then find that grip. Try and avoid that curb as much as you can. Uh, but however, that is a curb that you can take slightly. Coming down into Puan, moving my braking marker a little bit further back and it seems like we're gonna miss that apex just a little bit. Run directly into the wall, unfortunately. And that is going to end our qualifying run. We didn't actually have enough time to finish that lap. So that's why I just head, head banged up the wall right there. But fortunately, nobody really had time to finish their laps. So, so all the GT4s are back there basically with no lap time set. This is Joey, he's starting to the right of us and he's gonna start running into this guy who then retaliates by backing him <laughs> back into his starting position. And uh, let's get underway. This is week 13. This is GT4 mixed with, I think it's LMP2 in the rain. We have six laps in total. And unlike the uh, the Porsche Cup race, this one is not ranked. So this doesn't actually count towards your I rating or SR. But I did want to just kind of experience this track in the rain and hopefully experience some good racing. It can be uh, very few and far between in week 13. However, we are going to give it our best go here. The light actually goes green there and we get rear ended by the white and black McLaren behind us who uh, I mean was ready for the light to go green I was not and you can tell by the speed difference here that I'm not super confident on my throttle at the moment going three wide with two McLarens Joey being the one on my right the white one ahead of us dives up the inside of car number one makes contact with them they push each other all the way around turn one I'm able to take a wide line there and find grip on the exit 
However, I think I had my TC and ABS turned up way too high. I was trying to turn it as low as I could, but I think I accidentally turned it as high as I could. And I'm going to lose like three positions there. The Aston, the um, Mercedes, and that Porsche all go through. I'm extremely slow up Eau Rouge and Radion. And uh, we do manage to make it though, which is nice. We actually have a better run than this Cayman. So I think the Cayman maybe is just underpowered in a straight line in the wet. I'm not quite sure what it is, but every other car just seems to absolutely dust us in the wet. So we have have the outside as we head towards the end of the Kimmel straight can not really see all that much with the spray being thrown up but it will die down as we make it through the corner around the outside breaking late keeping that grip and then tucking in front of him as soon as we can to find the dry line it's kind of kind of away from that second apex there you don't want to cut that curb and uh, losing a significant amount of time to the cars ahead. We're about two seconds behind them. As we come into the hairpin, which I was talking about in qualifying, everybody goes deep. We've got the Aston spinning. The Mercedes and McLaren that ran into each other at T1 are still running into each other like 10 turns later, and we will pick up three positions there. So that puts us all of the way up into P7, heading towards Puan now and chasing down Dominic, who is in the BMW. 0.9 seconds ahead of us at the moment few cars ahead of us you'll see somebody um, Mercedes losing grip through Puan probably put a tire in the uh, in that puddle right there and he is out of the equation so that puts us up into P6 attempting to use the exit curb on Puan and it does get us a little bit loose there we managed to catch it but there was basically no force feedback uh, on top of that curb so that was something I noted that I should probably avoid doing in the future trying to get the car rotated here with the throttle through these little S's corners uh, still avoiding the puddles on the on the apexes there and you can use that exit curb that exit curb doesn't really affect you all that much this corner I was having a lot of trouble with it seemed like perhaps not as much trouble as the BMW who goes very deep there but uh, definitely was struggling to keep my speed up while staying on somewhat of a dry line trying to avoid the curb there again as well probably didn't need to and at this point I've noticed that my race labs is completely not working at all it is absolutely bugging out the standings seem to have no idea what is actually going on so we're going to deactivate all of that race lab stuff I don't know if you saw that, but there was the banana Mercedes who is off the track. We're going to skip back to see what happened to him. A very easy mistake and one that kind of sneaks up on you. He just relies too much on grip while he is on top of that curb, which is wet. So completely loses grip, spins off to the side, and that is when we come through. So we scoop up P5 from him, I believe. Heading towards the final corner of the track, the BMW ahead getting a little bit of understeer, it looks like going through that puddle, manages to get the car back on track without getting a slowdown, but we do gain a massive amount of time, taking the inside, um, which turns into the outside for turn one, we are side by side now. Lap number two, Joey is right behind us at the moment, and I've made up my mind now that for turn one, I'm going around the outside, gonna try and send it deep and cut back for a better exit, however, it just doesn't work out like that at all. I go deep and just completely lose all remnants of uh, closeness to this guy. As he pulls away, probably gaining about eight tenths there on me. Joey probably about five or six behind me. And up Eau Rouge and Radion. As I've said, I'm not great at this corner. It seems like the BMW ahead may be slightly worse as he sends it completely through Radion on this occasion at least, which is going to give him a massive slowdown. Hoping that I can take advantage of that. The slowdowns are much more accurate in the rain. As a matter of fact, like sometimes for a four second slowdown, you only end up losing about two seconds. In this case, it looks like he's losing quite a lot of time on board with Joey who creeps up on him. And at the end of the Kimball straight, Joey is going to look to follow me through up the inside and that turns into the outside for the next corner, but the the BMW backs out and lets Joey have that position. So Joey up into P4, P5 now, and I am up into P4. P3 directly ahead of me, and the two front runners are significantly up up the track. I think that they avoided all of the accidents that happened on this corner last lap, so it allowed them to really separate themselves from the pack. Trying to manage my um, my speed through there and kind of blipping the throttle, really dancing between the throttle and the brake, which is I know not the best way to drive in the rain, but. It's week 13 and we were kind of just jumping around series, so I didn't actually get to really practice any of these races. I just kind of jumped in and went off of my own um, instincts. Driving into the dirt there, which actually gives us a much better line than the Mercedes ahead who gets oversteer and drives extremely wide, heading towards the final corner of the track. And that is going to put us right on his tail, trying to kind of turn left and right so we can see a little bit better where we're going. Get right up behind him as we get onto the grid, really hunting for a tighter exit here as he goes slightly deep out of the final part of that chicane and then he's going to hold the inside so we move to the outside for lap number three as soon as we get the clear we 
tucked to the inside. This is the halfway point where we are heading on to the halfway point of this track. It's only going to give us enough time for six laps. We are up into a podium position and taking a look behind us. The Mercedes has died. We'll take a look at exactly how that happened. Joey from way downtown sends a move up the inside. Mercedes does well to pull away there. Looks for a switch back here, momentarily making it three wide and ends up making contact with Joey, which sends him into the wall. So from P3 down to P6 for him and uh, probably some damage as well. Joey is now sitting in P5 behind the BMW as he gained that position from the Mercedes and then lost it to the BMW, who ends up sliding out of Eau and Radion, not really anywhere. He he can go ends up making contact and getting back on the road both of them with no major damage which is nice however it opens up the gap massively for me so i now have no pressure behind but there is going to be pressure ahead because this guy who i think he's like three laps down reversing onto the hairpin he's got no rear bumper i'm pretty sure he's got massive wheel damage and i'm gonna fast forward here as he just kind of sits here and i think he's trying to wreck people ends up getting that guy and um and then takes this guy out too and we'll take a closer look at each of those incidents so the lmp is coming through there and they get around him just fine this is p3 for those guys also makes it through as p4 comes around though not so lucky directly into the back of him and loses the front bit of his car now this is p1 and p2 of um of my class so p1 just barely manages to make it before the mercedes pulls onto the track and the second amg is going to get clipped by him into the wall and that would actually give him damage that had to be repaired by the time i make my way around they're both gone you can see the trail of where they were so that puts me up into p2 joey in p3 and the bmw in p4 however he's going to completely send it deep into that corner and run into the wall remove himself from the race just about we have plenty of time behind us joey has plenty of time behind him however there is a shit ton of time between p1 and myself so really no chance of catching this guy until he decides to pull over and disconnect from the race i'd say there's a 50 percent chance that that was a dad with a kid and i don't have kids so i get to take p1 almost lose it going over the exit curb on puan but managed to gather it up we've got about i mean i don't know i'd say probably six seconds behind us to Joey, maybe even more than that. Feeling pretty confident in my ability to ride this one out. However, I could not have anticipated that on the penultimate lap, lap number five, as we come up Eau Rouge and Radion, the red Merc who was murdering people at the hairpin is <laughs> has returned. I guess he got out of the pits with um uh, maybe he had a fast repair and i'm thinking that i lost him at this point i'm significantly ahead of him but he has some other plans for me at the end of the kimmel straight i'm just taking my line here just minding my business not realizing that this guy behind absolutely beelining it over the grass and as i come oh god right in front of me that scared the absolute shit out of me okay obviously the situation has changed vastly from what it was about 30 seconds ago i now have this guy who is i think he's probably about four laps down at this point i'm being extremely cautious taking it very very slow i know that he's probably gonna look to just kind of smash me off as soon as i look to make a move so hoping that he will just make a mistake and he goes a little deep here i'm risking it going side by side with him fortunately he loses it over the curb and i'm just able to slip ahead of him before he runs into the wall possibly could have taken me out there as well he does gain it uh regain it back up and takes a very wide line through puan this is joey so this is a few seconds later and he is coming around puan i think joey's sitting in p5 or p4 at the moment in class this guy driving back onto the track and uh joey looking to go around the outside this guy is looking very slow however couldn't have anticipated that he would turn left directly into him now the guy makes it look very he makes it look very um accidental but i'm pretty sure all of this was on purpose um so he gets back on the track joey pulling back onto the track not losing a position from that thankfully and the mercedes is going to be recording an audition here for a formula drift team however it goes very sour as he completely gets the car turned around joey is approaching looking for the gap on the inside the mercedes is trying to pull back onto the track though manages to avoid him there and the mercedes actually undercuts him so joey finds himself behind this guy once again and this guy is going to just kind of be lifting off of the throttle here, I'm pretty sure, waiting for Joey, and you, you know stuff is gonna get sour here. Going side by side, they're gonna make contact. That one was arguably on Joey. I mean, probably could have been avoided by both of them, but he's looking to get around him. He does manage to get around him here, and the Mercedes is full throttle now at this point, looking for a move around the outside into the hairpin. Very interesting kind of like 
just situation that's going on here. I can't tell if it's hostile or not. It seems hostile from that little shoulder bump that he gave Joey and Joey, and then he actually waits for Joey. So they're side by side. Car number 15 has caught up to Joey from about a minute and a half back. And now they are battling down the straight, just knocking each other around. As they head towards the first turn, Joey is going to look to send this guy off. The guy actually pulls over slightly and Joey is, yep, yeah, he's, uh, he's done. Joey's just, he's out the race. This is lap number six, end of the Kimmel straight, and P2 has actually caught us. Like I said, we're not very fast in the rain. Uh, this guy spun earlier on that hairpin, which is probably the only reason he's behind me. I'm running three minute laps. He's running 157s. So what, that's a three second difference. Should be enough um, sh or shouldn't be enough for him to catch me this lap if I were able to hold this all of the way to the end. I think the gap is currently about six seconds. And by the time we come to the final corner of the lap, all we have to do is make it through safely, not spin, not cut the track, not get any big penalty. He is behind us, but um, he actually begins to drop off as we make our way onto the grid. And we'll take a look back at exactly what happened to him right here. Is he just, yeah, he bends it there, so he's dead. Um, I mean, honestly, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. I tried to like build it up like he had an opportunity there, but I was pretty far ahead. So that would be a dub for us. First time in GT4s at Spa in the rain. We actually did set a 257 for our last lap, so that was pretty exciting. Going to park it right in the middle of Eau Rouge and Radion because there's nobody near me. So flexing that right there. And uh, here are the results. So taking a peek around here, we did claim P1 in class, P3 overall with Kramer and Max being the only other drivers that survived outside of the GT4s. And everybody's about 30 seconds away from each other um, on the interval crossing the line. The majority of this lobby did not finish the race, and I feel that that was in large part due to to the, that red Mercedes who had 65 incident points. That's a record uh, for me at least, I've never seen that before. If you guys enjoyed this video and wanna support me, please check out my channel and I'll see you next time.